rise and shine. It's time to begin another glorious day in hell. The sinners are burning, the demon lords are clashing, and it's only three days left until the next purge. Three days left. You're running out of time. But, lucky for you, I'm here to help. As you are certainly a miserable sinner beyond any hope of redemption. But what the heck? I'm bored. Management is terrified of me. So they snuck me out of sight and out of mind to work on you. Aren't you happy to see me? Ha <laughs> ha! And what a precious little biscuit you are! Did you really think we'd let you occupy a hotel room without asking anything in return? No. We're going to throw you as hard as we can against the hopeless path of redemption. Failure is nothing to be afraid of, my darling. It's so... interesting. People get so twitchy when they start thinking about final alliteration at the hands of a heavenly host. A surgical white light, uncaring, and then... nothing. Less than nothing. Recycled into spiritual crap and absorbed by the void. But put on a smile. You're never fully dressed without one. And we're here to help. Let's get started, shall we? Lie back. Get comfortable. It's only me. Are you afraid of the radio demon? You should be. <laughs> now, I have a question for you. Dig deep. Why have you always been a failure? Go on, tell me. That's why you're here, after all. My eyes are up here, dollface. I know my teeth are sharp. But if you keep fixating on them, you'll make yourself dizzy. Now focus. Why is it you could never just behave yourself? What makes you tick? What's that itch under your skin that makes you ruin everything you touch? Aha! Uh -huh. How candid of you. They make medication for that, you know. Go on. Uh huh. Well, that's no way to treat a friend. And what happened after they crushed your esophagus? Really? A cat girl? That's hilarious. <laughs> Ah, uh, there. Finished. A diagnosis? No, no, you ninny. You are hopeless, remember? You should pay more attention. No, I was drawing you. Do you like it? Be honest with me. Hmm. Never could get the hand of this drawing style. So hard to fit the right number of fingers on each hand. Although, if I had taken better notes, they might have come in handy. You never know when you might need to mock someone in public. And you, dearie, have some soft spots. Wait a minute, what am I saying? There's hardly any time to mock you. We'd better proceed with the next treatment. Electroshock therapy! Safe? Effective? Who cares? <laughs> I think it's fun as hell to hook up a patient to 8,000 watts and make them go vroom. <laughs> really make their hair stand on end. Now, now, you really should know I have no patience for arguments. You really don't want to get between me and my fun. Let me fluff your pillows. And stop crying. You're a demon now, remember? <laughs> Just hook the red clip here, and then the black clip. Not 
room. Hmm. Very, very interesting. Your eyes are glowing. On a scale of one to ten, where are we on pain? So very strange you are. Do you find this relaxing? Hmm. Who would have guessed? What a guess. I could count on one hand the number of demons who can act as an industrial capacitor without popping like a Christmas light. You might just be worth collecting. What do you think of that, huh? I'm gonna radio broadcast tower collecting dust while I kick around this forsaken hotel. You know, it got so boring bringing havoc to every side of the pentagram when even those killjoy angels are getting in on the action. Do you have any idea what a letdown it is to annihilate a city block only to find out Gabriel carpet bonded last week? How obnoxiously dull. But maybe I just need a studio audience. I can picture it now. Strapping you to aspire and tickling your bones with my every broadcast. A dedicated listener. Oh, yes, of course. The radio demon is back. And since I've got plans for you, we've got to get you out of this hotel before the exorcists do a flyby. No time like the present. <laughs> we've got to get you cleaned up. Now, how to convince Charlie that you're not a degenerate? Ah, of course. This will be my finest work yet. We've got to get you dressed. Presentable. Fashionable. Hmm. I believe I already said you have to smile because you're not fully dressed without one. Better! Now for your suit. Honestly, I have no idea how you've managed so long in these brimstone rags. Everybody who's anybody in hell wears a suit. Old Charlie girl and I don't see eye to eye so much, but you can't knock her colour palette. Say, so, you're not attached to that ribcage, are you? Just a prank, darling. Just let me get this measurement around your sternum. Very interesting. Very interesting. I think I'll be able to bring in Husker's old suits for you. You don't mind cat hair, do you? Just last year I got him a crushed velvet coat. By way of... apology. No need to keep track of who set whom on fire when there's good times ahead, right? Now, stick your arms out. Husk is 66.6 .6 centimeters last time I checked. But he might have gotten a little stretched after that rumble with Cherry Bomb. Hmm. Now that is a truly bizarre quirk of anatomy you have there. Your arms are exactly the same length. How freakish. Why, how the hell do you decide on which side to roll over while you sleep? Oh, stop fidgeting. It'll be all over soon. Around the neck? Not too tight, right, dear? Measuring the circumference of one's throat is just... paramount to a properly fitted suit. And from the shoulder to the waist... Hmm. Perhaps I should measure from the other shoulder. Much, much better. You haven't been run over by some sort of locomotive, have you? Any badger-related accidents? Why am I asking? Oh, no reason, darling. Well, I won't mince words. You, darling, are a challenge. An excellent challenge. I'll just leave you hooked up to the wires while I go slaughter and pillage. And hopefully I'll find, well, something suitable. 
suitable. Ha <laughs> ha what shapes. I found a pun. You just recharge your batteries. I will be right back. Darling.